Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Sorry that it has taken me so long, but a new ride overview is here at last. Today we are going to talk about the side friction coaster. As its name suggests, it is kept on the track only by side friction wheels and not by wheels under the track. This means that, just like a bobsleigh coaster, it will fly off the tracks if it crests a hill with speeds higher than 50 km per hour. This single aspect of the coaster makes it a very bad coaster type, because it means that for every hill you have to make sure that it doesn't go too fast. Add to that that it has an extremely small variety of elements available and you have a boring coaster type with low speeds and low stats. One of the only good things about the side friction coaster is that it is quite cheap compared to a lot of other coaster types, but that doesn't offset the bad aspects. If you look at the side friction coaster in this park, you can see that it has a steep drop, which is normally not available for it, but the mod OpenRCD2 has added steep hills to it. Thanks to Minoc from our community discord server for letting me use this park for the video. I mentioned the bobsleigh coaster before and I would like to do a comparison between the two to determine which one is worse. I put out a poll a little over a week ago and asked you which one you think is worse and why. It started with the bobsleigh getting the majority of the votes, but it slowly converted to roughly 50-50. Some of the points made were that the side friction coaster has less elements than the bobsled, mainly lacking the helixes. It also has even lower stats than the bobsleigh. Some arguments in favor of the bobsleigh being the worst are that it is a lot more expensive and often bigger. You guys seem to be divided on which one looks better. Some prefer the look of the old school side friction and others prefer the bobsleigh coaster with trains going through banked turns at high speeds. Personally I prefer the bobsleigh, but I don't think there's a definitive answer to which one is better or worse. Now that we've discussed the general aspects of the coaster, let's take a look at the special elements it gets. Like I said before, it has an extremely small variety of elements available. It only gets the station, brakes and S-bands. That's it. No block brakes, no photo section, no banked turns, no slope turns. It's just a barren desert with nothing in it but the very basics. Now let's take a look at the stat penalties. The side friction coaster needs to have a drop of at least 4 meters, it needs to have at least 2 drops, it needs a top speed of at least 18 km per hour, which is the lowest top speed requirement in the game, and it needs to be at least 250 meters long. If it fails to meet any of these requirements, all its stats will be divided by 2 for every requirement it doesn't meet. The length requirement makes it bad for spamming, as the smallest and cheapest designs aren't that small and cheap. Speaking about designs, let's take a look at some of them. As usual, we start with the cheapest design that makes all stats requirements. It is not a good design, as it has a bigger footprint than some of the upcoming ones, and it has an absolutely terrible throughput. However, it is still the cheapest design without penalties I could come up with, so it might be useful in some cases. The next design is already a lot better. It is smaller, has higher stats, a much higher throughput and is only a little more expensive. There is rarely any reason to use the previous design instead of this one. The third design is extremely similar to the second design, except it's slightly bigger with slightly higher stats for a slightly higher cost. I can't say which one is better, but both will do the trick. The reason all these designs are so similar is because this is all the side friction coaster can do. The fourth and final design is more square and has the highest stats of all. Once again is it basically just a bigger version of the last design. There are a couple of breaks in this coaster to make sure that it doesn't go too fast. When designing these coasters you want to keep in mind that it goes faster with guests than without, so if it doesn't crash in a test it might still crash when it is in operation. There is not really much use in making bigger designs than this, and it has very minimal returns. All in all, I do not recommend using the side friction coaster, unless your only other options are coasters like the reverse freefall and the bobsleigh coaster. If you want to use the designs featured in this video, a zip file containing them is in the description. If you want to calculate how much you can charge for these designs and other coasters, a calculator to do that is also in the description. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.